wanted to make a video and talk about some concealed carry handguns. Just some general things, nothing real detailed. Uh, would take too long, but I just kind of want to give my overview of some concealed carry handguns. Now, here's the thing, guys. 90% uh, of the population that has CCW pick something small like this to carry. While me and a lot of people that watch my channel carry things such as this and do it easily, a lot of the general population out there just doesn't wear the right belts, the right clothing, or have the right holster. And things that are big like that, it just becomes too cumbersome for them, and they le end up leaving it at home. So about 90% of the people out there when they conceal carry, they just get something small like this and use it, and there's nothing wrong with that. These are some of the most convenient and easy to carry guns that you can get on the market today. Not everybody sleeps, eats, and breathes guns <laughs> like me and some of my subscribers do, and that's okay. And they just want something that, hey, I can have protection. I put it on me, I go out the door, and I'm good for the day. I don't even have to think about it or worry about it. And if I need it, it's there. That's what a lot of guys do. So, so let's go ahead and go over some of these uh, concealed carry options uh, that, that you have. And we'll talk about some of the pros and cons on a few of these. Uh, first off here, I have to start with uh, my Glock 43. This is one of my most accurate firearms that I've ever owned. I can almost outshoot my large frame Glocks using this, and that's really saying something, because a lot of times uh, you sacrifice some accuracy when you go down to a small gun. And for me, that doesn't happen with this Glock 43 and the XS Big Dot Night Sights. This gun is very accurate for me. Uh, its self-defense range can shoot one ragged hole with this most times when I shoot. Another firearm that's become very popular here is the Glock 43X. This has the Glock 43 slide, but with an extended frame right here. It's still really thin, and that's what makes a gun easier to carry most times is how thin the profile is. It keeps it closer to the body, there's less weight, and some people just find it easier to carry, especially those guys that aren't wearing the right belt or necessarily carrying the right holster and wearing the right clothing when they carry. So you have something like this that is still very easy to carry but gives you more capacity than the 43. And like I said in the beginning, keep in mind guys, all my big firearms that are mid to full size, I left in the safe. We are just talking now about the ultra compact uh, firearms that are made to be thin, made to be smaller and marketed specifically toward the concealed carry market. Uh, something such as this here, while there is guys that carry this every day on a daily basis or carry a Glock 19, this is the 19X, this is not marketed as a concealed carry firearm. Yes, you can do this, I do it, you can do this, you could carry it every day if you wanted 24-7. Uh, There's a lot of guys out there that do. Just want to show you guys, um, amidst all the German Shepherd hair, I just brushed him out <laughs> not long ago today. And there is the G19X, just to show you guys that yeah, I do carry this gun. Put the shirt over it now. And there it is. But for the general population, uh, they don't market a firearm like this, like this 19X, as a concealed carry gun. They try to market something thinner, something with a shorter grip, probably a shorter barrel. And that's what a lot of the population is going for uh, when they want concealed carry. They don't want something uh, this big. They're not really used to uh, trying to carry something like this. Now let's move on to a little gun that I really like, I wanted to get a hold of, and I got the newest version of it. The earlier versions did have some problems, and they worked it out for this version, and that is the SIG P365. I got this from my cousin. Uh, he didn't care for it too much. I think that uh, it had nothing to do with how it shot 
or its performance or reliability. I think the reason he didn't like it was because I think the grip was too small uh, for him. It has the SIG night sights on there, as you can see with that front sight right there. Let me go ahead and zoom in for you. And by the way, guys, this video is in 4K HD, so you can go ahead and turn up your uh, HD setting in YouTube if you'd like to view this. So not only is this a great little concealed carry gun, very easy to carry, very thin, slim, streamlined, and lightweight. Not only that, but you have the option of a 15-round magazine, which is just great. So while you would have to worry a little bit about this printing, depending on what you wear, uh, most guys out there that own this gun can carry this with the 15-round mag and not have any worries. So you do have options. And then you have an in-between magazine where you can carry 12 rounds. Uh, this would be 10, then there's, one with a, then there's one that's a little bit longer that would be 12, and then this would be the 15-round magazine. So it can easily be done, or if you wanna go the most concealable way, you would carry the 10-rounder with one in the chamber for 11 rounds. So this gun gives you a lot of options. It has your night sights. Um, in a stressful situation, you're going to be looking for that front sight. You can see how it glows right there. When you come up, that's what you're going to be looking for. That's going to be what you're relying on is that front sight for that shot. So I give a high regard to the SIG P365. Uh, the Taurus is out here for two different reasons, and I'll explain that when I get to that firearm. Just hang with me here. Right now, we're going to talk about this Kimber K6 revolver. This is a upgraded edition, has a semi-polish. It had these special grips on there that you can see here that say Kimber. It has the fiber optic front sight right there. I really like this revolver, guys. And one of the things I really like about this revolver that I want to show you here is how these rounds set all the way fully seated in, this, in the chambers like that. Smith & Wesson used to do this decades ago, probably 50 years ago. They used to recess the cylinders like this. See how nothing uh, sits above the cylinder line there? They cut down into the cylinder for each of the rounds to seat all the way down in. That does uh, a couple of nice things for you. Number one, I just like the look, and it's neater, but for function, what this does is when you close the cylinder, you're able to maintain such a close gap, very little gap there. You're able, you're, you're able to maintain the cylinder being the closest possible position it can be to the frame, which is very good to have. The tighter you can have this and still function good is going to be a better performing firearm. There it is once again. Let me take one of these out and show you. There's a little bit better view, guys, as you can see how they milled that down right there so that when you load your rounds, it sits flush. There's no divots, nothing catches, everything's flush. And then the cylinder is able to be very close to that frame back there. This is a really nice, well-built 357 Magnum. You can shoot 38 Special plus P, 38 Special in this, and you can also very easily slip this in a jacket pocket in the winter time uh, when you're going out. If you just want something quick and handy, uh, you can slip this in your jacket. It has that long uh, trigger pull but then once that trigger pull gets near the rear, it almost feels like a striker-fired uh, firearm. So you could easily carry this by slipping it in the jacket and carrying it that way if you need to at night. Quick and handy, easy to get to, uh, doesn't weigh a lot, packs a ton of power, and has six rounds, even in this small package. Got that nice front red fiber optic sight to pick up when you're gonna aim. That is the Kimber 357 Magnum. Now let's move on to the Taurus G3. 
As most of you guys probably know, I've been using this as my bathroom gun ever since I purchased it. It's been in the bathroom where there's a lot of moisture, a lot of humidity, and you guys tell me what you think it looks like, how you think it's doing. I checked this gun before I turned the camera on, and not only the exterior, but the interior, I unloaded it before I brought it into the room here, um, is clean as well. The barrel still has traces of oil that I can see here in person on the barrel. Everything is good, just like it should be. I have no issues with this firearm being in those adverse weather conditions that it's in in there. So everything is doing really good with the Taurus G3C. So, so what I wanted to tell, what I wanted to say was, this is my choice for an option. If you don't have a lot of money, or maybe you just don't want to spend a lot of money, you know, a lot of guys out there have a big family. They just can't go out and spend five, six hundred dollars on something at one time. So I understand that. This is something that you can have. It comes with three 12 round magazines. These are very good magazines made by Metgar. And some of the best made magazines you can get. So you would have 12 plus one. You could have 13 rounds in this gun with two extra magazines. I would have no issue carrying this gun. I'd like to get a holster for it. It has some of the best stippling right here on a firearm from factory that I've ever felt. Uh, for about $250 to $299, you get this. If that's all you can have, or if you just like this gun, it will cover you. The only thing I would recommend is just dry fire practice with the trigger. The trigger is by no means horrible. It's kind of in between. It's not like some of your higher end striker fire guns, and it's definitely not like your low end high points and things like that. It's kind of in the middle somewhere. But I had no issue hitting kill zone shots uh, when I went out and shot this gun. I shot around 150 to 200 rounds. I shot hollow points, ball, uh, different grains, different weights, bullets, and I had no issue whatsoever hitting in the kill zone areas of the targets that I was shooting at at self-defense range. So don't just pass this one up or blow it off. Taurus has really uh, stepped up here recently, wanting to get into this concealed carry market and putting out a product that actually works. Uh, there's guys on YouTube that have around, one guy I know has around 4,000 rounds through this. There's other people that's taking this through training classes and they've had no issues. The gun didn't break apart. <laughs> and I'm just saying that if you want a lower priced gun, and that's all you can afford, I would highly recommend the Taurus G3C. Now, out of everything on the table, there is one that I really do not recommend for concealed carry, and that would be this Bond Arms Derringer right here. I got this because I like it. I like the wood grips. I like that it's made in Texas. I like that it's a real solid stainless steel Derringer it's built just like a revolver with the stainless steel and the wood. It's not cheap at all. Uh, this is as much as a Glock would cost me. And just, I just wanted it just because I liked it. Even down to the details that I'm going to show you here. Look at the checkering or the knurling on the arm that opens the barrel. Just little details like that is really something cool. Uh, the detail in the wood grips, this is real wood. You can get different ones. And also, by just removing that hex bolt right there, you can order other barrels right on eBay or online. And I can take this from a 357 Magnum to a 9mm, a 45 ACP, a 10mm, you name it, pretty much. Shotgun shells, 410, 45 long colt, just by taking this hex bolt out right there. So there's a lot of options you can do with this little thing. And I did try it out, and I was pretty accurate at self-defense range. Here's the thing. There are some guys you're, you'll see on YouTube, if you look these up, that do carry these. But the thing is, is they practice a ton. They practice drawing this thing while cocking the hammer. You can't fire this unless the hammer is pulled back. 
So they practice drawing this, pulling the hammer, and when they come up on target, they're ready to fire. But you have two shots. There are other things that I would pick over this that I could buy that are just as small, but I would have more rounds and it would be easier for me to hit my intended target if I needed to. This is just something neat that I bought to put in the collection and it's not something I would necessarily rely on. Now what would be cool is if you had the 410 uh, shot shell barrel and you loaded that with the, the Winchester self-defense rounds that have the discs and the copper pellets and you could use this as an anti-carjacking gun. So you're sitting in your car, there's a holster that goes on your belt that carries it like this. You could draw this and cock that hammer and if somebody was trying to break into your car while you're in it and carjack you, in a lot of states like mine, you can use force up to deadly force. Uh, you're, your car is an extension of your home and it has castle doctrine applied to it. Now my state also has stand your ground law as well, where anywhere that you're legally allowed to be, there is no duty to retreat if someone is trying to attack you or cause you great uh, bodily harm. I really like having the bond arms in the collection. It does kick like a mule and I shot some full power 357 Magnum through it and it's really neat. I, what I want to do is get some low-powered 38 specials and go out and just have fun with it. That's what would be the thing for me to do. But basically, other than that, anything you see here on this table would be a great choice for you to concealed carry. Uh, like I said, most people out there in the public that aren't big into guns, they are not going to get anything bigger than this for concealed carry. Now, this is what I like for concealed carry right now. This is my Glock 19X with the Surefire X300 Ultra. But the thing is, is when I carry it, I do know it's there. And there, you do have to watch uh, when moving around and things because I'm right at that limit of uh, carrying this concealed uh, to where it does print some, but I can definitely get away with this with just a t-shirt on. See what the Kydex does to the Surefire X300 Ultra. Just from drawing it in and out of the holster. But a lot of times, guys, for the past six years, this has been one of the greatest grab-and-go firearms that you can own right here. This just the standard Glock 43. It does have a Terran Tactical base pad here that gives you one extra round. So I would have eight rounds in here. And this little thing just disappears Simple to carry, won't even remember that it's there unless you need it. And, you know, it's just a great little uh, slim, very sleek, nothing sticking out, bulging on the sides or anything. Just very sleek, slim, easy to carry, and have with you anywhere you go. This is what a lot of people gravitate towards, is something like this. This is just, this is not harder to carry. It is just a little bit longer in the grip length. That's the only difference you're dealing with here, guys. If you were to carry the G43X over the 43, it's that much grip length, but you would have 10 rounds plus one in the 43X. So that would be the only thing, is that length and grip right there. Right where you see that magazine touching at the bottom, that would be the only thing that you would be dealing with in a concealed carry situation over the 43. Some people do though, just wanna go as small as they can, so they pick this, but this is just as nice to carry too. Has the Ameriglow Operator night sights on there. All right guys, there it is, just an old fashioned gun talk video, giving you some general ideas. Uh, let me know what you think, let me know what you guys carry. There's a lot of other options on the market. Uh, because of the concealed carry market in this country is so vast and there's so much money being put into concealed carry firearms, there is a ton of companies that have given us a lot of options, and that's a good thing. So there's a, much more than what you see on this table uh, right here. All right, guys, until next time, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is DOF, and I'm out.